Hi everyone, I'm David Aragon, and this is the February 10th edition of Horses to Watch, where I highlight some horses to follow and potentially bet back on the New York circuit, but also around the country based on the trips the horses had. And this week, that's going to be the theme as we focus on two races from Aqueduct, and also one from out of town down at Tampa Bay Downs that took place on their Saturday card, an undercard race to the Sam F. Davis, that was their feature that day. But we're going to begin things in New York, a race from last Friday, February 5th, race six on that card. It's a maiden special eight going seven furlongs for New York, Three rolled up Phillies uh, around one turn, and we're going to focus on the number five lucky girl. Let's break these horses from the gate, and you're going to see that this horse breaks fine. She's a fourth, making her the fourth start of her career, I should say. Uh, so she's done it a few times already. She uh, gets to the back of the pack a little bit after other horses move up to take the lead in this race. Her rider, Louis Cardenas, is trying to rein her in to be at the back of the pack early. She's a closer. Uh, but you see as they move down the back stretch, the early pace is not that fast. And she starts to get a little bit rank under Cardenas, and he's trying to get her to settle, and it's just not really working. Uh, the pace is moderating ahead of her, and she's just throwing her head about a little bit. He's really far back in the saddle trying to get her to calm down and what's going to happen is he's going to be forced to steer her out into the forepath at a time when you don't really want to be doing that just as the horses break for the far turn because you do want to save ground even at aqueduct where sometimes outside movers do well uh, especially on this day where it seemed like inside being inside was a slight advantage so going four wide around the turn definitely not where you want to, what you want to be doing especially at this part of the race they're around the three-eighths pole and she's making this four wide premature move up the challenge for the lead no surprise that the winner is going to be the four to five favorite the number one bank sting who's setting that relatively moderate pace saving ground every step of the way and now you see by the time they get to the quarter pole lucky girl has traveled four wide all around the far turn lost all that ground already made her move at this point and all things considered she's going to stay on pretty well at the end of this race she does get passed for second but she's going to battle on for that runner-up spot all the way down to the wire all things considered i thought it was a pretty game effort from her even though she's no match for the winner looking at track as she traveled 37 more feet than that winner bank sting who saved ground every step of the way so i think with an inside trip she arguably could have won this race also as i said the rail it looked like it was the place to be early on this card i think it moderated throughout the day and potentially there wasn't really any bias to begin with because some of those early winners might just be the best horses when they rode the rail. Uh, but regardless of whether the rail was not the place to be, you don't want to be making four wide premature moves around the far turn. So I think Lucky Girl, her performances look like they've hit a little bit of a plateau. She's had similar mid-50 buyers in her last three starts, but she's had a couple of trips in her recent races, and I think we'll see a step forward from her with a better trip next time out. Moving on to a race from Monday's card at Aqueduct. This was that card that was rescheduled from Sunday because of some snow in the area. Uh, it was race seven on the Monday card, an optional claiming 62,500. Nominators of two other than going nine furlongs around two turns on the Aqueduct main track. Let's break these horses from the gate. And I want to focus on the number four, Danny California. As we watch this race, let's talk about the way the track was playing on Monday. Early in the day, we saw some gate-to-wire winners, but not horses winning off by huge margins. Some close finishes. Horses that were racing outside seemed to do okay. But as the day wore on, we saw more and more horses that were racing off the rail just completely start to back up around the far turn. And horses that rode the rail were just running away to these gate to wire finishes or horses that rode the rail from off the pace just seemed to really be energized as they got into the stretch riding the rail. Just the kind of track where you had to be inside to be successful by the time you got to the last race of the day, and this was the seventh race on the card, and that's exactly how this race is going to play out. The horse that I'm focusing on, Danny California, he broke well and was contesting the pace around the clubhouse turn, but he's going to settle here into the two to three path, and that's just not where you want to be on a day when the rail is considerably biased. And the horses that do well in this race, unsurprisingly, are the number one Limonite, who will be the eventual winner. He's riding the rail the entire way from that inside post position, and the number three, Empty Tomb, gets up for second. He didn't break well and was compromised by a poor start, but Trevor McCarthy, his rider, makes the wise decision to stick him on the rail and ride it all the way on both turns, so that's going to allow him to have some run in the stretch. And the number six, Backside of the Moon, the favorite, he's the speed of this race riding the rail the entire way. Doesn't really put in a very good effort. Uh, he might be just a horse that's going off form a little bit, but still, he looks like he's going to come up empty at the top of the stretch, and he almost holds on for second because the rail is the place to be, and he stays on it. And as as I said, the horse that you want to focus on here is that number four, Danny California. A two-wide trip might not seem like a bad trip on a fair track, but on a biased track, 
that's just not where you want to be because the three horses that he's battling with here, they've all gotten perfect trips in that inside path. And he's the only one who's had to work harder in that deeper going to the outside. So he's going to drop away at the end of this race and finish fourth, but still far ahead of the rest of this field. Other horses had ability in this race, including another horse who was outside the number two, Someday Jones. Danny California is going to finish far ahead of that horse. It looks like Danny California had been off form coming into this race, but I think this was a subtle sign that he's actually getting back to some better performances for Orlando Noda. And if he runs back in a similar spot next time out, I think we'll see him put in a much better performance. Moving on to Tampa Bay Downs down in Florida for their Saturday card. This was race seven, one of the few maiden special weight races they ran that day. This one's going six and a half furlongs for three-year-old fillies. And I want to focus on a first-time starter, the number one ballet school. Let's break these horses from the gate. You're going to see this filly is pretty sluggish coming away from the gate. You can see on the top part of the screen, the head-on shot, she veers in a little bit. And on the bottom part of the screen, she is just a good two to three lengths behind this field as soon as they come away from the gate. And she's going to be even slower in this drive from there, just very sluggish at the back of the pack, probably reacting badly to kick back, only settling once she gets far behind the rest of the field. Um, though, despite the fact that she's so far back, the pace of this race, it wasn't extremely fast. The eventual winner of this race, East Wing, she's up close to the pace in the early going. Uh, the runner-up is in a stalking position down the back stretch, so it's not like this is a race that's completely going to fall apart. And you see how far back that number one ballet school is on that top shot on the back stretch. She's a good six or seven lengths behind the second to last horse as they move into the far turn. Now, the eventual winner here, the number eight East Wing, she's going to take over, as I said, that runner-up, the number 11. She's going to move into second, coming around this point. But watch the number one ballet school at the back of the pack here. She's coming back into the screen. She is just rocketing past horses on the outside in that red cap with the blue silks. Uh, she easily runs by those horses at the back of the pack. She comes a little wide into the stretch, and she's going to start to lug in as they get into the stretch. But she's still finishing on pretty strongly, even as she tries to lug in here. And she's actually going to get up for third in this race, only beaten by about three lengths. And that's pretty remarkable considering where she started at the beginning of this race. And you she's, she's just flying past these also runs at the end of this race, getting up for third here, just about a length and a half behind that runner up. And we're not going to watch the gallop out, but she actually gallops out ahead of the rest of the field into the far turn, continuing that momentum. Seems like the kind of horse that's going to appreciate added ground and her pedigree would corroborate that notion. She's by orb. Her dam was a uh, daughter of AP Indy. Uh, she, or, I'm sorry, Giants Causeway, I should say. She's a half sister to the AP Indy sired half brother to her, Majestic Warrior, winner of the Hopeful, but real stamina on the bottom side. The second dam is that good Kinsman Farm filly, Dream Supreme. Uh, so this is a homebred for Kinsman Farm. Uh, real uh, been bred along those dams lines for that uh, for that breeder for a little while. And as a daughter of Orb, you think a little more distance will be fine for her down the line. She just has to learn how to get out of the gate because I think there's ability here. She only got a buyer in the mid 50s, but I think we're likely to see a much better effort out of her when she runs back in the future. So those are all the horses to watch for this week. Remember, if you want to follow these horses moving forward, you can add them to your DRF watch mail on DRF.com. Just add them to your horse watch list, and you'll get notifications when these horses run back or when they just have workouts so you can follow their progress coming out of these races out of which you want to follow them. So thanks for watching this week, and make sure to stay tuned for future episodes of Horses to Watch on upcoming Wednesdays.